Sasya Viryena Vidrita Nimanatmanaha Sasura Sura Gandharvam Sayaksho Radharakshasam Jagad Vashevartate Dham Krishna Sya Sacharacharam Indriyani Mano Buddhi Satvam Tejo Balam Dhritihi Vasudevat Makandyahu Kshetram Kshetranyayevacha Sarvagamana Machara Pratamam Parikalpate Achara Prabhavo Dharmo Dharmasya Padura Chutaha Tathāsāṅkhyam vidyāśilpāri karmacā Vedāśāstrāni vijñānam etat sarvam janārdhanāt Eko viṣṇur mahat bhūtam pritak bhūtānya nekaśaha Trilokān vyāpya bhūtātmā bhūnte viṣva bhūgavyayaha Imam Stavamad Bhagavato Vishnur Vyase Nakirtitam Patedya Ichet Purusha Shreya Praptum Sukhanicha Vishveshwaramajam Devam Jagata Prabhavapyayam Bhajantiye Pushkaraksham Nateyanti Parabhavam Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Very nice. Getting there. Huh? Getting there. Yeah. 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 See, the, the light at the end of the tunnel is the, the Brahma Jyoti. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to take a closer look at Shloka One Thirty. Vasudeva Shrayo Martyo Vasudeva Parayanaha Sarva Papa Vishuddhatma Yati Brahma Sanatanam. He takes shelter of Lord Vasudev, huh? Vasudeva Shrayo, and becomes very attached to him. Vasudeva Parayanaha. Huh? He becomes attached to him. He becomes purified of all sins, sarva papa vishuddhatma, and he attains the association of Lord Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, yati brahma sanatanam. Huh? So we were talking, we were reading in uh, Nectar of Devotion about attachment to the Lord and how there's two ways of getting that attachment. Do you remember what they are? And Take, the mercy of Krishna. Well, okay. Nobody could hear it because you didn't have the mic. By following the regulative principles of devotional service and the mercy of Krishna. Right. Those are the two ways. So, by chanting these thousand names of Vishnu, these are these come under the regulative principles. Why don't you leave it on the harmonium in case you get, need to get it later? This comes under practice of regulative principles. Uh, but by this practice, one gets the mercy. Uh, where is it? Um, oh, right at the end. Vishveshvara majam devam jagata prabhavapyayam. Bhajantiye pushkarakshang nate anti parabhavam. Those who worship the lotus eyed supreme personality of Godhead, the unborn creator, controller, and annihilator of the material universe, do not suffer defeat by the cycle of repeated birth and death. They become liberated from material existence and return home back to Godhead. Parabhavam. Parabhavam means 
the highest destination, the highest state of existence. So those who practice this, this simple practice of chanting the Lord's names, see, in any form, uh, the Lord's names aren't limited to one book or one religion or one locally understood uh, aspect of God. Uh, but God is everywhere and in everything. And every civilization, every culture, every language has some terminology that refers to the creator, the source, the origin. Uh, and that terminology is suitable for this practice of chanting. So even if people understand God or the Supreme differently than we do, well, that's all right. Huh? We don't have argument with them. According to your understanding, you chant his name and you will get the same result. This was brought out by Srila Prabhupada very strongly in his books. And uh, he even wrote me a letter one time. I had proposed uh, beginning a, uh, a Christian organization based on chanting the names of Lord Jesus. And amazingly enough, Srila Prabhupada wrote me back and said that not only would he agree uh, to become the guru of such an organization, but that he said by chanting the names of Lord Jesus Christ, because according to their understanding, this name indicates God. And actually, etymologically, it's the same name as Krishna, Christo. Krishna in, in Farsi language becomes Krishna, and then in, uh, in Aramaic and those Palestinian languages becomes uh, Krista, Krista, and in Greek, Christos, in Latin, Christus, uh, in, in English, Christ. Actually, it changes more going into English than any other language, phonetically, but it's still the same word root. Uh, so he said, just by chanting the name of Jesus, if they believe, if their faith is that by chanting the name Jesus Christ, they're chanting the name of God, they'll get the same benefit. As long as they follow four regulative principles, no meat eating, no intoxication, no gambling, no illicit sex. I was amazed when I got that letter. That's, that's one of the most amazing, merciful letters uh, or instructions that... I think I've ever heard anywhere. So this chanting process is not limited to uh, the Vedic names of God. Uh, it's not limited at all. So if, if someone is a Muslim, that's fine. You chant Allah, Allah. Uh, I don't know about the, uh, the uh, what are they called, Rastafarians? They might have to change their habits a little bit. <laughs> no. <laughs> but they, if they chant ja, 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 uh, they'll eventually get the same result. But first they have to overcome the offenses against the holy name. So that's where we have the advantage. We know details, the detailed uh, description of the process of the development of devotional service. And as we go through the nectar of devotion, we have been examining this process in great detail. See, we're so lucky to have Rupa Goswami in our line. We're so lucky to be Rupa Nugas. Uh, that we have such scientific and detailed and accurate descriptions of the development of higher states of consciousness. See, I keep talking about consciousness, you know, and the reason why this is so important is that there is no other lineage, no other school, no other approach to God that includes a complete theory of consciousness. What do I mean by complete theory? Well, any theory that is complete ought to predict the different states huh, that the thing goes into. Why, why is quantum mechanics given so, so much praise and... and uh, why is it relied on for so much research and stuff like that? Because it actually predicts certain phenomena in the subatomic realm that would be very difficult to predict in any other way. A 
theory, a good theory, a theory worth keeping around, will predict that consciousness ought to change in certain ways given particular process and particular changes and so on like that. Uh, but where in the West is there a theory of consciousness? Well, where in the West is there a theory of consciousness, period? <laughs> <laughs> they, they deliberately omit consciousness from the realm of investigation because it's subjective. Huh? Consciousness is always subjective. There's no such thing as objective consciousness. Huh? Because my consciousness is my consciousness and your consciousness is your consciousness. And they never mix, they never merge, they never connect. They're always separate and individual. Uh, saying that, 